In this lesson, we will explain the information that you can expect to receive prior to departing and when arriving at a controlled aerodrome. All manner of information can be expected from an aerodrome controller via radio, and there are some phases of aircraft operations that have a set format for the information that is transmitted. The following recording is an example of an airways clearance. Two to a tree. Good morning. Flight to altitude at 6,000 feet. There is no speed restriction. Score card it. Climb altitude 6,000. No speed restriction. Score card it. Easy two to a three. Easy two to a three. Up to 3,000. Heading 095. Heading 095. Passing 3,000 feet. Easy two to a three. Prior to taxiing for takeoff, a pilot requires some essential pieces of information to enable him to arrive at the correct departure runway at the right time and depart in an authorised and controlled manner. The aerodrome controller will pass a pilot the following. The runway in use. This term is used by controllers to indicate the runway considered to be most suitable at the time use by the types of aircraft expected to land or take off. Pilots may request a different runway if they choose, but the aerodrome controller authorises any such request. The current surface wind direction and speed and variability, the QNH altimeter setting and the QFE altimeter setting if asked for, the air temperature the current visibility in the direction of takeoff and initial climb, or current runway visual range, known as RVR, the correct time. At most major aerodromes, automated systems of delivering this information is available to pilots departing and arriving. It is called the Automatic Terminal Information Service, known as ATIS. Here is an example of such a broadcast. Having arrived at the holding point of runway in use, the pilot will be told of any significant changes in surface wind direction and speed, air temperature and visibility, or RVR, significant meteorological conditions in the takeoff and climb out areas. Upon arrival at an aerodrome, a pilot entering the traffic pattern will be told the runway to be used, the mean surface wind direction and speed with significant variations, the QNH altimeter setting, and, if requested, the QFE altimeter setting. You will recall that whilst operating under visual flight rule conditions on the ground or in the air, it is the pilot's responsibility to avoid collisions. However, whilst in the vicinity of a controlled aerodrome, aerodrome controllers will pass to pilots essential traffic information to enhance their ability to avoid mishap. Essential local traffic information should be considered to consist of that information concerning any aircraft, vehicle or personnel on the manoeuvring area or traffic operating in the vicinity of the aerodrome which may constitute a hazard to the aircraft concerned. An important job of the aerodrome controller is to inform pilots of the aerodrome conditions. Pilots are able to gather some of this information through other means, like NOTAMs and ATIS broadcasts, but it is still the responsibility of the aerodrome controller to ensure that all relevant information is passed to pilots. 
The information passed will include aerodrome construction or maintenance work on or adjacent to the movement area, rough or broken surfaces on the runway, taxiway or apron, snow, slush or ice on the runway, taxiway or apron, water on the aerodrome movement surfaces, snow banks or drifts, any temporary hazards, any lighting failures, any other pertinent information. This completes the lesson on information to aircraft. Hopefully, you have understood that to ensure the very highest safety standards, it is important that information regarding the meteorological and operational conditions of the aerodrome is passed to pilots by aerodrome controllers. Without a formal and accountable exchange of information between the aerodrome controller and aircraft, incorrect assumptions might be made, leading to poor decisions and compromises in safety.